All right, howdy. So we've got another problem here to check out. This is another example. We were just talking about potential energies. So what I'd like to do is I'd like to calculate a potential energy of a specific situation. So we've got this situation here where what I've done is I have taken a box and put it on this platform. Uh, the platform was sus suspended by the spring, so it originally was way up here. And then I put the box on and it fell down here, compressing the spring. So I want to now figure out what the potential energy of this system is, the potential energy with respect to the bottom of the spring. And I want to do it that way because that ends up being well-defined. The gravitational potential energy is not well-defined because it has an arbitrary zero. Actually, the spring potential energy does as well, but it's but there's a place where it makes a lot of sense to call the spring potential energy zero, which is this spot here, the spot where if it wasn't compressed, it didn't have any potential energy, right? So we're going to look at it in that way. So what is a good way to approach this? Well, we have a little problem here which is we know that this is 1.5 meters up here, but we don't know this height. So this L is going to be the height above here that we're going to give the potential energy for the box with, and we don't know the compression here. So we have to find one of those, uh, probably the compression first, because we can use Newton's first law to do that. And after we found the compression, then we can go ahead and find the potential energy. So first thing we want to find the compression of the spring. All right, so this is a two-part two problem. Uh, when we find the compression, we're using Newton's first law. Newton's first law means we draw a free body diagram. So the box has some weight and the spring is pushing up on it with some tension. I mean, there's some axes here to help us out, but this is a fundamentally a one-dimensional problem, so we don't have to worry too much about them. And there's no net force because we care about the spot where these two are in equilibrium, where there's just enough force from the box to cancel out the force from the spring, or vice versa. Let's strike that, reverse it, as it were. Okay, so... Let's see how we can do this. Well, the first thing to do is turn this free body diagram into an equation. The equation has T going up and W going down on the box. Those go on the left-hand side, and on the right-hand side, we get the net force, which we said is zero. Okay, so actually, they're both the net force. So, but in this case, the net force equals zero, not some sort of acceleration. All right, then we have to do something. Let's substitute in the uh, definitions. Kx minus mg is equal to zero. But what we said before was if, this min if the tension minus the weight is equal to zero, that has to mean the tension is equal to the weight. So we'll just make those equal. Then we have to substitute in some numbers. What did I say k was? I said the spring stiffness was 98 newtons per meter. That sounds contrived. Times the compression, x, is equal to the mass of the box, 5 kilograms, and it's equal to just the mass of the box because the platform was already here beforehand. So that equilibrium is being measured from, from that spot, from um, the spot where two kilograms is pushing down on the spring, which is the nice thing about the linearity of the spring that we talked about earlier. So we have five kilograms uh, times 9.8 meters per second squared. All right, so that's going to mean I'm going to have to multiply these two guys out. So that's five times 9.8, five kilograms times 9.8 meters per second squared. 
Then I'm going to divide through by 98 uh, newtons per meter. And a newton is a kilogram meter per second squared, and we cancel out that meter, so it's only kilograms per second squared. And that was going to be equal to our x, our compression. So our compression is now given by this formula. That's just something that we, or, you know, this mathematical operation, it's a little bit of arithmetic. So we have 5 times 9.8 divided by 98. Oh, I know that one, that's 1 tenth. 9.8 minus 98 is 1 tenth times 5, so that's equal to half a meter, 0 0.5 meters, that's 50 centimeters. So if that's our compression, what's this length? Well, the current length of the spring is equal to the original length of the spring minus, right, the original length of the spring up, compression down gives us the length. So that's going to be L is equal to 1.5 meters minus 0 0.5 meters, which is equal to 1 meter. Okay, so we're going to need both the X and the L in computing the um, potential energy. Okay, so the potential energy is U. It's just the sum of the gravitational part, UG, and the spring part, which is US. UG is MGL. It's the mass times gravity times the height, the distance from um, zero to your position. So that's L. And then we have to do the spring potential energy, and that was, I said, one half k, this 9.8 meters per second, times x squared, where x is the compression or extension, and in this case, that x is the compression. Okay, so we've got all those numbers, though, so this is just now substituting numbers in and multiplying and then adding. So we have a mass, again, that was a 5 kilogram box with a 9.8 meters per second squared gravitational acceleration on Earth with a length or a height of 1 meter plus 1 half the 98 newtons per meter, newtons per meter, newtons per meter, times x squared, and that's... Um, one half of a meter squared. So then we have to calculate all that out. That's five times one, which is five. Okay, I think I'm all right with that. And then uh, okay. So well, whoops, whoopsie, whoopsie, whoops. All right. So that's going to be. 1 half times 10, so that is 49 uh, newton, or joules, excuse me, newtons times meters, so joules, plus 1 half times 98 times 1 half squared, so that's 1 eighth of 98, which is 12.25 meters. Um, and that's going to be 51.25 meters, joules. I'm sorry, what I've got on my mind is the fact that I screwed up here and I put two in there and didn't notice, right, because there's a two kilogram there, and that makes this 49 and this guy here whatever I just said it was, uh, 51.25 joules. Okay, so uh, that's basically how you go through this. Um, you, you first need, in this case, to make sure you have all the specific... You, the entire, uh, yeah, that's a way to screw me up. Um, the first, in this case, have to make sure you have all the specified information, all, or you can specify all the information that you need 
over here. Um, so the situation isn't completely specified in the problem statement because we know that it compresses, but we don't know how much it compresses. So the first thing we have to do is we have to find that compression. All right. Now that we've found that compression, we probably have everything we need because now the situation is completely specified. And we can use this result plus the um, concomitant result here to put the correct numbers in the correct spots so that we can get our answer of 51.25 joules. All right, well, that's enough for this one. We'll do another one in just a few minutes. All right, bye now.